My question to you from this passage, what I received from God, will it be all about Him? Will it be all about Him? Will it be all about Jesus Christ? In first point, there will be seven points. First one, see only his sign. See only his sign. First heading is the demand for a sign. Pharisees, Sadducees came to Jesus and tested him by asking him to show them a sign from heaven. He replied, when evening comes, you say, it will be fair weather for the sky is red, and in the morning today it will be stormy, for the sky is red and overcast. You know how to interpret the appearance of the sky, but you cannot interpret the signs of the times. A wicked and adulterous generation looks for a sign, and none will be given it except the sign of Jonah. My brother, my sister, there's many signs that we can read when somebody is nasty with us, when somebody is not in a good mood with us, then there are certain signs, there are certain interpretations that we put to that. There are certain things in your life that if this happened, it links up to something that your dad didn't do when you were small. When this happened, it means you remember the time when there were, was a lot of fears in your life about provision and suddenly the stress is there. But you don't know about this. You don't know how in your subconscious, you don't know in your mind, actually in your heart, there are certain signs that you interpret in certain ways. And then out of that, you have certain emotions or certain opinions or certain stages where you just close your heart or you open your heart. But God says there's only one sign. See only his sign. And at the end of the day, my brother and my sister, it's the sign of the cross. Like Jonah, doing his own thing. In the sign of Jonah, the first thing was, give myself, I give my life as a ransom. So that this storm and the destruction of all of you guys in this boat will subside. So it will not be happening anymore. So for the storm of life and heading humanity for a big crash, Jesus said, Father, here I am. Throw me down. Put me down there. Let me be crucified. So that the storm, so that the storm can cease. So that the storm of destruction over the nations can stop. Hello? And out of that place, out of the depths of the sea, like Jonah, cried out to God, Jesus on the cross. My father, my father, why have you forsaken me? Because it's the only time when God took his hand away and his face. So that your face will forever shine upon you, his countenance. His hand will always be there. His hand of, of healing, his hand of grace, his hand of blessing. But you can make that decision to walk away from his hand. As you decide... What signs will be important for you in your life? But at the end of the day, Paul says, I will boast in nothing except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. There's one sign. And the word of the cross will be the power of God for those unto salvation. So at the end of the day, the cross, talking about the Father so loved us that he gave his only begotten Son. To die on the cross so that what? So that we will not perish but have everlasting life. Because of his awesome love. Because he couldn't keep that love inside of him. He couldn't keep the, his passion for you and me inside. He had to do something about it. That is the sign. That's the only sign, Jesus says, that you're supposed to have. The adulterous generation. The ones that flirt with other rubbish. They want all the other signs. When somebody does not love me or doesn't respect me or talk behind my back or that or that. How do you respond? That's a sign in your life to get depressed, to get negative, to talk back, to walk in bitterness or unforgiveness, all these other chamors. Because I'm positioning myself as a, 
How does it say there? A wicked and adulterous generation. But we are the new generation for Christ. Amen. May you walk. May you walk in that. May you walk with what God has for your life. May you interpret the signs accurately. Because there is a sign. A sign is called a giant. And in the light of all those signs of what they brought back from Canaan, we make a decision. I say, uh-uh, we go back to Egypt. Only to die in the desert. Those who interpret the signs accurately. Yes, they saw the giant, but I interpret this sign accurately. In the light of God's promises, in the light of what God said, this giant is our food. They were not cannibals. But no, through the challenges that they had to face, they grow. It becomes a strength in them. They got strengthened by it. Hello? Are you with me? Let's say, I will see only his sign. Out of that, you'll believe what? Believe only his word. Verse 5 to 12, the next passage. When they went across the lake, the disciples forgot to take bread. Be careful, be careful, Jesus said to them. Be on your guard against the yeast of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. So then I skip to the end of that passage. Then they understood that he was not telling them to guard against the yeast used in bread, but against the teaching of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Be careful that you don't interpret teaching in the light of performance, religion. That you sit with critical spirit. Be careful. Believe only his word. Be careful. The teachings of the Pharisees that can destroy you. The, what is that? The teaching that you hear, but you, in your mind is justification. In your heart, justification. Justification for certain reactions, for certain ways of keeping your heart close, for certain ways why actually there's compromise. Or interpret it that you feel condemned. Condemnation. No. Conviction through the Holy Spirit and turn to the truth. Not condemnation so that you get discouraged and walk away from Christ. Hello? Are you with me? It's your choice. Believe among His word. Be careful. One of these signs in the end times will be what? Not all the stuff that's going to happen out there, but deception. Of the saints. That there will be such a lot of deception. There will be such a lot of conspiracy theories. There will be such a lot of facts that people will say, this is the truth. There will be such a lot of people that say, this is what God is saying. This is the prophecy. This is the fulfillment of this and that and that and that. Hello? Believe only His word. Word of God says, we must believe like a child. Have faith like a child. But there's something in a child's faith. There's a sincereness. There's something with it where I don't need to figure out everything. It will not work for you. Be careful that you don't want to understand everything before you believe. You believe. And you understand that you must believe without understanding everything. Are you with me? So in that place... Let's learn how to be having faith like a child. Where there's a genuineness. And the second point, there's a simplicity. I can be genuine and genuinely wrong. The suicide bomber blasting a lot of people into the eternity. Kids and whoever. Thinking, wow, he's genuine in what he does. He's really genuine. But genuinely wrong. Are you with me? So being genuine doesn't mean your heart is right. Being genuine to say, I'm honest. The devil can be very honest about stuff. But he's really not genuinely having faith in God. So genuine, that's good. That simplicity in believing God. That's the other point. To have faith like child. Faith like a child, he doesn't understand everything. Hello? But there must be a sincerity and a simplicity in your faith. You must be sincere with your motives and why you would believe something. Your motives that it will be about him. Sincere and genuine. 
Amen. Amen. Believe only his word. Number three, accept only his revelation. From verse 13. When Jesus came to the region, he asked his disciples, Who do people say the Son of Man is? He replied, Some say John the Baptist, others Elijah, some still say Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. What and what about you? He asked, Who do you say I am? Who do you say I am? Simon Peter answered, you are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. We are so easy to say, that one is a this, and that one is that, even in the time of politics. That one is a this, that one is that. And the biggest revelation in your life. It's not, he is like that, and she is like that, and he is a this, and she is a that. The revelation in your life, who is the one that you say that you serve? Who is the one that you say that you sing about? Accept only his revelation. You can agree with something. You can agree without accepting. The devil can agree. And when you come at the end of the day with truth, he needs to agree. He is the son of God. But he does not accept it. He doesn't accept the truth in here. When you accept the truth, it changes you. It sets you free. You can know that this is wrong. I must change that. And, I must change. and you can walk out here knowing what you need to change. Or you can change now. Mm. Mm. And now allow the Holy Spirit to take the truth and set you free. And when you take the truth and that can set you free and it sets you free, then you have accepted only His revelation. Because the Holy Spirit gave you the revelation where well, while I was speaking, even when I would speak, and it's just a word, and it wasn't even under the anointing of the Holy Spirit, but you took it under the guidance of the Spirit, it can be absolutely the revelation that you take and it set you free. But you decide, as you are sitting here, what type of revelation you take from who? From a demon of religion, from your flesh? From self justification, whatever. And that is not just now, that's when you have the word. When you think you're supposed to take the time of the word. When you pray, may God help you. Amen. May God help me in Jesus' name. You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. Jesus replied, Blessed are you, for this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood, but by my Father in heaven. It can be with such a lot of revelations that we can say, Wow. But maybe you walking with your dad. Maybe you walking with your father God. Amen. And that you will receive what comes from his heart. Out of the place of relationship, receive the revelation from the father. Revelation comes from the place of relationship. And relationship, simple relationship with God. Genuine be genuine, to be walking with simplicity in your relationship with God to protect what you call revelation in your life. Your insight, what you believe, what you have and what is true will be protected by the relationship that you have with God. And in that relationship you'll always stand amazed at His grace. Therefore you will have grace on people, you will have grace in yourself, you will forgive yourself, you will forgive others. Because that dynamic can only work with the there and the here. There and here, two sides of a coin. There is no, no there and not here, or, or here and not there. I don't talk. You cannot love your neighbor if you don't love yourself. In the way that you forgive others, you pray, God forgive me in the way that I forgive others. You easily have issues with others. You ask God, please God, have easily issues with me. Forgive us as we forgive those who trespass against us. In that way, Lord, do it with me. How I do it with others, do it with me that way, please, Lord. Well, may God help us. Amen. In Jesus' name. Accept only his revelation. Number four. Seek only his, no, sorry. Build only his church. Build only his church. Amen. And I tell you, 
I tell you, Jesus says, I tell you that you are Peter and on this rock, this rock is what? On this revelation. On this revelation, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not overcome it. I will build my church on that revelation. My brother, my sister, you will make, you will have this breakthrough in worship. You have this prayer. You make this commitment to God. Hello? You had this time with it. You get out there and you say, the devil stole my peace. The devil stole my joy. The devil, yeah, I just went out there and that guy came on my, on my way and he just thought, how is it possible that that guy has more authority in your life than the Holy Spirit and Christ himself? Just because you decide that he has more authority. If that guy is right or wrong, the problem is not that guy. The problem is how you decide who will have the final say and the final priority. Who will have that priority. Hello? Are you with me? Yeah. On that revelation, I will build my church. So the storm must come. But ask God that the storm in your life that must reveal what you build will come now. Hallelujah. May God help us. Why? So that I will not build a lot of rubbish in my own self-righteousness. At the end of my life, the word says, I am saved as through fire, but what I've built is all burned away. Basically, I've wasted my life on earth. God still loves me, not less. He loves himself, and he loves you with the same love that is in him. Because he is love. Hello? But what you've built, all wasted. But it's grace, if you can understand tomorrow, what you've built wrong. Because that must be shaken, that must be must be done with, so that you will not build further on stuff that is shaky in you, on principles and ideas and mindsets that are shaky, so that in your future, whoever is involved with you can be destroyed when everything falls in on them. No. God help me to see what I've built wrong tomorrow. I want to build on the rock according to what you give me. I want to build on the rock the revelation, not of my good idea, but on the revelation of who you are. Amen. Amen. Number five. How can it overcome what you build with God's revelation? I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you lose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then, from that time, Jesus began to explain to his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things at the hands of the elders, the chief priests, and the teachers of the law, and that he must be killed and on the third day be raised from to life. Amazing. How did they forget about that when it happened? How many times God will show you certain things in your life and later, for some reason, you just forget it? It's just gone. May God help you, may God help me. And then Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. Never, Lord, he said, this shall never happen to you. This is a man very genuine with God. Very genuine. And you can be very genuine and think that what you do is right because you are genuine. And while this man was so genuine with God and his heart is genuine, Jesus replied, get behind me, Satan. When is the time to take offense? When you do something with a genuine heart because you love God, because you have a vision, because your heart is here in the vision, because you are giving yourself in everything, and your heart is there in it, and you come with your whole heart, and you put your whole heart in it, and the reaction is not thank you, the reaction is get behind the sector. Oh. It's time to take offense, Peter. But just five verses earlier, he got the revelation from the Father that you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus said, on what came from your mouth, from that revelation, I will build my church. And then what came from his mouth, five verses later, Jesus said, get behind the Satan. There's stuff in you. There's things that you believe. 
regards is excellent. On that, I want to build your life. I want to build my church, a place where my father can be, can live, can dwell for eternity. On that goal in you, I want to build a place for my father, for eternity, to dwell. But that thing is in your life. That's from hell. There's stuff in us, my brother, my sister, until the day that you die, unless you were called Jesus Christ. That I must decide. Get behind me, Satan. There's things that we need to deal with severely. And the problem is, because you can do that with a genuine heart, you think it's okay. I mean, when you looked at the wrong stuff, or you did this, or you or you swear at someone and you know, or you have bitterness, all this rubbish, and you are unfaithful with some things and you lie. That's easy to say, get behind me, say, but when you do something with a genuine heart, as if unto the Lord, and somebody gives you input and say, get behind me, Satan. Not in that way, but you understand what I'm saying. That's quite something else. That's sometimes difficult to see when you do something with a genuine heart. Then you can cover it up as if it's the Lord, but you are deceived. Then you are deceived. So easily deceived. If we think because you, we were genuine, it was truth. It's not necessarily the truth. You can be genuine and absolutely stand against what God wants to do. May God help you. May God help me. Amen. You need to first believe only his word. Accept his revelation. Then you can build only his church and seek only his agenda. That was Peter in this place. Get behind me, Satan. Because you're a stumbling block to me. You do not have in mind the concerns, the principles, the agenda of God but merely human concerns, human agenda. It is human. It's just a human thought. It's just means like, what's means like? Means. Human. It's just human. It's like normal. It's normal to say, no, Jesus, this is not going to happen. This is not going to happen. And sometimes we are actually in our minds saying no to things just because it's human to say no. It's genuine, and it's genuinely okay to say no, but it's not God. So there's, there's things that we need to deal with where God says it's, it's a stumbling block for his agenda in your life. It's a stumbling block for others. It is, it is human to feel this way towards Vipia. It is human to feel this way towards Herman. But it's a stumbling block for what God wants to do in him through him, or him, or through me. Are you with me? And then we can have this issue of some things or somebody. And you're creating a stumbling block for God's work. And you're building against what God is building. And the only thing God says not, doesn't say, I forgive you. His first agenda is to say, get behind me, Satan. You are sent by the devil with that agenda. Fish. And that, God give us grace not to take offense. Because then we harden our hearts and then we truly build our own thing, our own kingdom. God can help us. Amen. So at the end of the day, if I understand that, God, I'm open for your input. If I thought I was genuine or not, I was genuine, but I was genuinely wrong. And because I came genuinely to him, that means be open. Be open to change. Amen? Then, next point was number six. Follow only His presence. Verse 24. Follow only His presence. Verse 24. Then Jesus said to His disciples. So this is like a summary with a lot of principles that He built now already in them. Whoever wants to be my disciple 
If you believe you are identified with me, if you believe that somebody will look at you and they will see that you're following Christ and not the devil and not yourself and not some good ideas, if you want them to be able to see that, then you must deny yourself, take up your cross and follow me. Deny yourself. Religion will get you to the point to destroy yourself. Or you will try to do the right thing and it will not work. And you try again and you feel, ah, this is hard to follow Christ. It's hard to be a Christian. Because in, in what you are trying to do, you're trying to destroy yourself. And God's not going to help you to destroy yourself. Not condemnation, but conviction to change. Amen. If you want to follow me, deny yourself. Let it net not be about you first. Because you followed your own way from the Garden of Eden. And your own way leads to destruction. But follow me. Because it will lead to life and life in abundance. John 10.10. 10. Are you with me? So then deny yourself. Take up your cross and follow me. Take up your cross. What is this cross that you must take up? No. Deny yourself at the cross of Christ. Where what? You are crucified with Christ. My death is in Christ. My death is in the perfect offering. The perfect sacrifice. I find my sacrifice in the perfect sacrifice. I find the laying down of my life in the perfect laying down of the life of Jesus Christ. So if your laying down can be in perfection of how perfect he laid his life down and your laying down is found in that, then you will have an awesome life. And you can have an awesome life in him. Oh, not all the goodies necessary that you're also trusting for. Yeah, you need to trust God. He's your father. You are his child. You must put your desires before him. Amen? But my brother, my sister, in denying, when you can do that, then you can take up your cross, and that cross is your identity in Christ. That cross, the other comparison of definition of that cross is a burden that is light. Yoke, easy, burden, light. A cross that is like a burden that is light, a yoke that is easy. Because he took up the cross, the responsibility to deal with all the rubbish in our lives. Are you with me? Hello? You want to follow his presence. That's the only way. You cannot follow him with the flesh and the rubbish. It's either follow him or follow that rubbish. But if you don't want to be confused in your emotions the whole time or confused in your, in your soul and have the issues that are, or stuff that he, is not working out, then let's deal with our souls. That we say in the light of focusing on the sign, the cross, believing only the word, accepting only from the Father the revelation, building only his church, seeking only his agenda, then I will start to understand how to follow his presence. Because following his presence, yes, he leads me to green pastures. Hallelujah. Now I have a testimony for the rest of my life that he led me to green pastures. But you know, there is a time when you go from the green pastures under the guidance of the shepherd through the valley of the shadow of death or to the presence of your enemies where he's preparing a feast table for you in the presence of your enemies. And if you can go and sit there, you will see how the battle belongs to the Lord and how he will fight the fight. But then you must have a respect for him as he leads you into the enemy's camp. That you will go and sit and have the faith to have a feast. Let's say, I will have the faith to have a feast in the midst of my enemy. Amen. Have the faith to have a feast in the midst of the enemy. Why? Because you believe and you respect that the battle belongs to the Lord. Because you choose to believe that the battle belongs to the Lord. Amen. Follow only his presence. Then lastly, live only for him alone. Follow only his presence and then live only for him alone. 
only for him. That's the last two verses that I want to go with. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it. And whoever loses their life for me, for me, for me, will find it. What good is it for someone to gain the whole world yet forfeit their soul? Or what can anyone give in exchange for their soul? Can give nothing except Christ gave everything. Except Christ gave everything. What will it benefit if you gain the whole world but lose your soul? What can the world give you? A lot of stuff. I'm not talking just about the bad stuff. Whoever wants to save their life, save their life. I'm not talking about something bad, bad. Once again, the parents, when they went through from Egypt, through the Red Sea, all, this, all the provision from heaven, all over water from the rock, quails and manna and everything, and they got into that place where they saw and heard about the giants and decided their identity, and they called their identity what? Grasshoppers. We are like grasshoppers in their sight. I don't know if they went to a giant and said, how do we look to you? You look like a grasshopper. We were like grasshoppers in their sight. That they decided, I believe the revelation from the mouth of a giant, but he didn't even say that. They heard no giant saying that. You, we can believe a lot of rubbish and give the devil credit as if he said it. He didn't even say that. But then why do we believe the rubbish? But Joshua Caleb said, no, we will believe the report of the Lord. Amen. These giants, they are our food. We will grow, th we will grow through it. Are you with me? But then... They said, no, you brought us out to die in the desert. We are turning back. We're going back to Egypt. We are making the responsible decision. So this is talking about whoever wants to save their life. It's not the guys that just want to destroy others or want to do all the bad stuff. I'm not talking about doing all the bad stuff. I'm talking about making responsible decisions that you feel justified. You are able to do that and you have the right to make that responsible decision. But it's not from God. Make that responsible decision so that for the rest of your life you can go and die in the desert. So go to heaven. You go and die in the desert. Or have the guts to surrender everything to him. That everything will be about him. And if he said, Joshua and Caleb said, if he said, and he promised us the land, look at the fruit of the land. Milk and honey. Let's not milk and honey fight against a giant. No, that wasn't their theme. It was, God promised us the land. Therefore, nothing. The enemy, they were so afraid. Then when they got to Jericho, that lady in Jericho said, everybody, they have no strength even to fight. There's such a fear on them. The lady said, there's such a fear on them. They are already paralyzed. They cannot even think of fighting the Israelites because they heard what they guarded in Egypt. And then why and how are we able to be so deceived about destiny that God has for our lives when we think of giants that we need to face? And they didn't even have to face the giants. It's not a David Goliath story. They never had to fight against giants in Canaan. God just did everything. They just had to have the guts to follow the most ridiculous strategies that God would expect of them. My brother, I finish off. Will it be all about him? Philippians 1, 21. For life is Christ, dies gain. Let the sum total of your life tomorrow and this week be Christ. That you will follow him. You want to find him in your situation. 
and go with him. God is a practical God. You will really get practical. It's not just about sitting and reading Bible and praying. That is the essence. That's the foundation. But then on that foundation, you need to be very practical and build a life, build a house on the right foundation. Amen? So go and get practical as your God is practical, but on the right foundation. Let it be about him that you will say, my life is about Christ and die is gain. Not only when you die and you see the fullness, but tomorrow, today, now, in the death of your soul, in where you repent in your heart right now, out of that what the Holy Spirit is showing you, what you must get out of right now, the death of that flesh, it's your prophet. It's a prophet. You walk out here with profit. With gain. If you made that decisions right here and left that flesh just here. God set us free from ourselves in that what is not from you, Lord. But we surrender our hearts to you. We choose as a unity to see only the sign of the cross. God, where some of us where we yeah, really have a struggle to, to let it be about you and you alone. We make the decision right now. We will only believe your word. We will accept only what is from you. We choose to build only your church, your kingdom. We choose to seek only your agenda, to follow only your presence, and to live for you alone, Lord. That's our heart's desire, my God. And help us, Lord, where many times we were genuine, but actually we were wrong. Help us not to be oversensitive in taking input, Lord. Each one of us, Lord. It will be about you and about you alone. I pray, Lord, that you will set everyone free that is in that place. That we will turn our back on that what is flesh. So get behind me, Satan. You will take me not away from that what God has for me. I pray that you will bless each one with an excellent, fruitful life. Where the cup overflows with goodness and mercy that will follow each one of us, Lord. Because we choose to follow you. Not just to desire the green pastures. But when it's time to move from that green pastures, that we will make that decision to go with you. In Jesus' name. And that name alone. Amen, amen, amen. I finish off. I just remember, we said it here already. Egypt was God's provision. Egypt was like green pastures. When there was famine. When it was famine. And God's people would die. When you could die in the desert and there's famine and God wants to provide for you, he will use Egypt. Egypt will serve you. Egypt will serve you. And it will be the green pastures where you will receive the best in the land and that you can grow. But then it's a time that you need to move from the green pastures. Otherwise, the green pastures will enslave you. God's blessing, God lead you to a specific blessing and success. And you are in that blessing, you are in that success. And if you're not willing to follow him, you will stay in that. But you will stay in that too long. And that same Egypt that was a blessing from God to serve the nation became the authority to enslave the nation. Don't overstay your welcome in certain blessings. But go with God. Let it be all about him.